Uh, what a bunkum game. I told you that's the word I've been using. I love that word. I remember my old man he used to use that word. Today, we've seen the team, the bunkum Bayern Munich. Okay, uh, joining us right on set is no other person than Aziz Oba. Aziz, you're welcome to the show. Good afternoon, wonderful viewers. Good afternoon, please. Joe, how is it now? Oh, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. You know, just coming fresh from the AFCON. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, certain sure. excitement can be defined. He's also a Chelsea fan, so I understand where he's coming from. Yes, exactly. Yes. One Chelsea left, and that Chelsea's coming. Yes. I deliberately drove that one out. We are champions of the world now. <laughs> I've not even started. We are continuing. <laughs> All right. Um, let me quickly also let you know that from time to time, you'll be seeing Aziz as a presenter on some of the shows. And um, you can be extremely sure that the dexterity we put on this particular station will come to bear. Um, Aziz, yes. over the weekend, Athletics Championship came in. I don't know why these boys that run this road selling gala, selling chips, cannot compete in the 42 kilometer. There was a day I, I wanted to buy a bottle of drink at my two. Yes. The bus driver took off. This guy ran after this bus. You know why? I've not paid. He caught up with us at first gate. And between the speed of the time this bus driver took off, I calculated it. That thing was not up to one minute. First gate, my two to first gate, is like almost 400 meters. That guy <laughs> made it on that two minutes. And he said, I got my money. I said, no, very. I went back to that thing 100 naira. <laughs> because it's quite appalling that people come in here to pick the dollar from our outlets and what, what is annoying me is they say they have category for Nigerians, category for continental. A marathon is a marathon. The Egyptians were here, they clinched the money, took away the check, male and female. I, I think Nigerians, we just haven't explored our potentials enough. We, we, we don't look into this aspect. We don't, we don't see these people on the streets. They, they can do more than we, we expect. They, they have the full potential to explode and, and, and they can do it but we are where we are in our country it is our usual saying on this show for you Joel, um in those days in school when they say come around marathon everybody will be running away it's 100 meter 200 meter fine we know the kenyans the ethiopians the ugandans the, yeah, they're, they're very good in the long distance race but what do you think we can do to begin to uh, encourage our young ones to come into the marathon area because there's a Serious big money spinning venture within the marathon. The uh, pepe, pepe race, yeah, yeah. The race in Bini race. Is, yeah. is right in there. We have one that has just come up in Ogu State. There's one in Shagamu. I was meant to understand one is coming up in Ekpe. Mm -hmm. And um, sponsorship are actually tripping. What do you think we can do? Well, it's simple. Um, just, just, you know, um, tilt a little bit to the uh, grassroots sports, so to speak. You know, um, go to schools on the streets, bring these people get them tested, you know, you need to know the hard conditions and everything, then set a race and pick out the best. That's, how, that, that's exactly what you do, because like back, back in Kenya... You're I not going to pick these boys around on the street. You're going to invite them also, because I, I, I saw back, back in Kenya, the good of Mary School, not of Mary School, Primary school. Yes. You've not answered me. You're not going to pick these boys around on the street. Have they, they you? We're going to invite these guys on the street. Some all of them will, will be fit enough to go through it. It's going to be an open thing. I want you, the, yes or no. Yes, we will pick the you, guy you, selling color. You, you'll be surprised that it is color they'll run after. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But they will, they will have to go through the professional aspect of it. Then they no, understand. definitely. You know, from the grassroots down the professional, when you pick the people together, you know, you know, you, you have to organize tournaments and you know competitions. When you get the best, give them particular training, mm. scams, you know, clinics and all that. You're gonna get the best, definitely. Sure. Oh, definitely. We are currently working on something right here on Super Screen TV. We intend to see where we can have a collegiate games uh, of 100, 200 meters and invitational relay. We're working on that, and it's going to be between schools between local government so that we can also uh, contribute our own uh, mm -hmm. necessary needed input in sports development, especially in athletics. We'll let you know how the procedure will go, uh, the modalities and the schedule. But we really believe that uh, bringing this to bear will help schools to engage their young ones from GS1 to GS3. And the Invitational uh, Relay Championship will be an open race. Even if those that say Gala and Chin, Chin can join, it will be a good one. Now, let's come down to something quite great. This is an Nigerian Israel Ade Sonia defended his UFC title. That, you know, I saw that guy um, in some magazines with some fancy clothes, looking cleaned up. I was like, is this the same Dracula that is in the ring breaking people's jaw? But he did defend his title over the weekend. That, that's a great one for him. He's always doving the, the flags of Nigeria. He's, he's a strong one, a very, very strong one. He lost uh, the, the, the last, a well, couple of last fights, and, and then he came back bouncing really, really, really tough. We are proud of him. 
and we always keep supporting him. Everybody Are you drawn? Um, quite a different fight from kickboxing and wrestling, but if you look at what Adesanya has done, every time he wins, he, he has the Nigerian flag on his neck. Yes. I, I think um, it's high time we honor such people and create not just a statue, uh, name places after them to keep them, uh, to keep that zeal going. When you talk about honoring, it was, it was in Nigeria for a couple of years back. I think the state governor, Nikiti State, honored him. And um, th th this guy, I think it was five years ago when, when he was taken to New Zealand. And there's been a kickboxer. He started from being a dancer, then to a kickboxer, because you see him in, in his fight. He dances a lot before, you know. And he got that name, Style Bender, from the Avatar movie and all that. So I'm not surprised by this and defending his title. And you, have, you need to understand that this guy that he, that he got knocked out now, they are from the same camp, the same gym. They, train, they, they always train together. So, and um, I'm, so, I'm so proud for him putting Nigeria on the map when it comes to mixed martial arts. He's so good. Soon enough, he's going to go on the heavyweight. Mm. Well, that as it may, we, we really want to congratulate Ibrahim Adesanya for keeping the flag flying as a Nigerian. I'm always excited when I see uh, a lot of people uh, putting their effort to see that Nigerian really gets up there. Uh, I'm a friend to Serena Williams on Facebook. Uh, we had a chat, a very small chat. I was fortunate to have uh, on Messenger, and I mentioned something. Why don't you come back to Nigeria and begin to give our kids the very beautiful skill of what you've acquired? Because I had you in Nigeria, and so my father said. <laughs> 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 and and I, I actually kept that because I want to follow up that. A lot of Nigerians are out there. They're doing pretty well. Even if not for the country, they're also showcasing that they have the true blood of Nigerians. All right. Let's move into football. We're moving straight to Europe. And uh, we'll be starting with the very big news. Yes, uh, it's a club a lot of people have come to love. It's a club that has a lot of followers. It's a club that, if you talk about uh, pedigree and entertainment, they have it together. Unfortunately enough, we have two of them on our decks here. I'm, I'm talking about uh, Olasu Komishibawali and Aziz Oba. Aziz, congratulations. Even if Sukomi was trying to be funny here, um, for Chelsea, yes. what is left to be won? The, the Premiership now, I think we, are, we last won in the last two, three seasons. So the Premiership now, they've won the, the Champions League several again. times. They've no, won I mean again, game. again. Okay, it, again and again. Yes, as Man City and Liverpool has been the last two teams that have won. Yep. And Man City have dominated for about as five seasons. twist, right? Yeah, it's never the enough. <laughs> this, this is the first time Chelsea is winning the World Club Championship. Yes. So they've won everything that has to do with club football. Yes. Mm -hmm. for, for you, what do you think Abramovich has done right that has given this strong momentum for each coach? Chelsea is a club that any coach that comes in can excel if you understand the philosophy. Yes. I, I think the, he, basically management he has just done right and, and, and great with that. He, he, he brought in the best managers. Fire them if at will if you don't perform. Brought in the best administrators. Talking of uh, Peter when Peter was there. Talking of Marina now. Marina is one of the best sport administrators. Even Emenalo. Emenalo was one of the best too. He, he really. And he's a Nigerian. Yes, and he's a Nigerian. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I want to hear. I want to hear that. Now, for you, Joel, this man right on your screen, Abramovich, when he came in, people felt, okay, you're a Russian billionaire. You just want to put your money somewhere because you love football. And Chelsea was just a club he just bought. He just bought Chelsea and said, I want to drop in my money here. Now, if you look down the lane, the memory lane, do you think this man? Will ever want to regret spending his money in Chelsea? I don't want to sound political, but I, I think you know um, the political reason is more of than than you know the love for football. Mm -hmm. I must tell you the truth because if you have to check his antecedents and all that, probably one or two stuff here and there. But I don't want to talk about that. But fine, he loves football. Putting his money in the club like Chelsea, I think no regrets. You know, even if he had one or two losses, but he's still on the track, and I believe he's still going to win a lot of laurels for the time to come. Okay, let, let, let's talk about the EPL because we're, we're moving to the games that was played over the weekend. Uh, um, the top four hit is right in there. Uh, you have Man City, who undoubtedly will pick the EPL. That's just a pure fact. Liverpool chasing very hard. Um, you have Chelsea right in there. Then you have. Three teams running for the top four uh, in this order, West Ham, Arsenal, Manchester United. Because with the game, Tottenham lost yesterday. Um, it's yes, it's a bit shaky. But these three teams won the WP top four. Now, for Chelsea, it, it, at the beginning of the season, they signed the player, Romelu Lukaku, yes. and they sold the player, Tammy Abraham. How, how will you rate that arrangement, that sales arrangement? Really, I, that's, a, that's a very, very 
tough one because I, I'm not really a big fan of Lukaku right from time. I, I don't I don't like the way Lukaku plays. It's it's a personal thing. Fantastic professional, fantastic footballer, but I really don't like him. I I I, I feel Tammy Abraham wouldn't have excelled now at Chelsea, but if given time, he would have excelled. But he's doing pretty well in Roma. Yes, 17 goals in 16 matches or, or so. That's, he's doing very, very well. Lukaku has not even scored five goals for Chelsea. So, so which means uh, that the special one saw something special in Tammy Abraham? No, the special one is just Murillo. <laughs> <laughs> it's just Murillo. Whatever the kind of player you have, if you have the right mentality, the right work ethics, you work with Murillo. If yeah. you're a very good footballer, you excel. Okay, um, Joel. Let's come down to the score lines. I, I, I am particularly concerned about a club that from nowhere is beginning to uh, give itself a solid name, Newcastle United. Um, just from nowhere, they were at the bottom, rock bottom yeah. of the league as at the time of the break before Christmas or after Christmas. Suddenly they're occupying number 17. Now, they say money can buy you happiness. But in sports, money can buy a fantastic player. Yes. Their recent form. Is it the money or uh, the vision that has taken them to where they are right now? Because it's obvious they won't go on relegation. I told somebody on this deck, Newcastle won't go on relegation. Now, this, 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 is, this is the money and this is the vision. You know, when you put them together, that's what's working for Newcastle right now. Thank God they have, they have one of the richest, you know, um, owners. I mean, they're, they're virtually the richest yeah, company in the world right now. Right now. They can buy... Ten Haaland, they can buy twenty Messi, fine. But they're a little bit, you know, from the drop zone. Now the player they have, they have, they have a Coutinho, they have a Trippier. They have to do extra work to be on that spot because even the guys they have on the drop zone, they're still finding to come, you know, to the middle. Mm -hmm. They don't want to go to relegation because you have a lot to lose when you relegate. Mm -hmm. Financial, you know, um, broadcasting rights and all that. So if Newcastle have to stay afloat, it's a big one for them because it's only telling look, we can buy more players and try to even win the, I mean, EPL. Be right there at the top four. So the owners they know exactly what they're playing at. They, 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 they just want, they, they didn't just need to put themselves together, then try and end at the middle. Mm. And then they can buy in more big players. Because before you bring a big player, he looks at your stats, you know, the sports you are, and the qualities you have when it comes to other players also. So they've really opened the door and the channel for other big players to come in. Because when, you, when, you, when you're bringing a player like Haaland, he looks at it and says, Yeah, I have a Coutinho, I have this other player, I can come in and play too. So, Good one for Newcastle. All right, we'll see how it goes. They did win their game over the weekend, one nil against Aston Villa, but still more games within the EPL for you, Aziz. Yes. Um, Everton with Lampard. Yes. Neither here or there. They won two games, lost just one, but they had a bigger one against Leeds United that ended 3 uh, 0. Lampard had it, neither here or there, in uh, Chelsea, and he was asked to leave. W w what style of play do you think Everton would pick? Haven't gone through the era of um, Rafael Benitez? I, I think it will, it will be a young coach trying to just motivate the players to just do what they can do and stay where we can stay. Just maintain the momentum, keep the team steady and, and, and mm. there's no pressure. That's just what it is. Mm. That's why he is the best fit for the job. He has no pressure. All you just have to do is work on your tactics, work on your techniques and and uplift the team, probably get it to <laughs> Europa, and, and that, that is, that's a success for him. Or the Conference League. Or the Conference League, that is success for him. Manchester City was quite wicked. They massacred Norwich City, consolidating their relegation position for the draw. Oh, I mean, they've, they've um, it, it's cruise control, I told you last time. Um, they just eyeing the trophy, just one leg, one leg in the, and the other leg is on the mm. EPL. Mm. Um, I think they say one or two games because, like, like my colleague was telling me a couple of minutes before the show started. They said, "Look, Manchester is going to lose. Fine, I accept to the page of sort. Normal champions, you lose some, you win some. Even if you have to lose like one or two, but you can't lose the entire ten games. You know, not, so possible. Possible. No, not, not, not with the caliber of Manchester. Uh, yeah, look at the players they have. They came prison by the I was talking about. Um, I was talking to you about Concello and all that, other quality yes. players too. And you have the, a bench made up of one or two young players. And Guardiola is this type. He gives room for the young players to come in and show themselves exactly what is. I think he's getting it right." All right, it's getting right for tomorrow. There's a game coming up by 15 minutes past eight, and that is the game between Maguire, uh, just in Maguire United, Manchester United, and Brighton. Uh, it has become an issue. Maguire is just a phenomenon on his own. All right, uh, for you as is, Manchester United, um, the coach, Rag, Ragnick. Ragnick. Ralph Ragnick. Yes, came in, and um, there were rays of hope, but suddenly a lot of people think it was the wrong decision. Pochettino has been spotted somewhere. 
But against Brighton, Brighton started the season pretty good. Suddenly they went down the drain and they're back right now. Against Brighton, they played Burnley. Yes. They played Southampton. They had issues. Against the Brighton team that is always pushing forward. What sort of game are you expecting to see? <laughs> it's Manchester United. I, I, I see them like, like a team that has lost its glories. And, and then they just it's just Manchester United. You mm. just see them one game perform and the other one, they are blundering. What's the problem with the team? I think it is the players, actually. Mm. I, I don't think it has anything to do with the management. I, probably Soje does not have the, the, the experience to lead such a team. But then Raf came in and everything seems to be fine until then now. So I, in that respect, I think the players are actually the problem at Manchester United. They are too pampered and, and some of them don't even perform up to expectation. When, when they come against competitions, they don't, they don't, they don't perform. So it is, it is there. They need to just probably ship off these dead woods and bring in new players. Give them low deals. Let them perform until justified before you give them exorbitant contracts and all. But God help them. I, I, <laughs> I hope they don't lose against Brighton because Brighton is fighting so hard now to keep it seven. Days. Fighting real so hard. That was the last game between Manchester United and Southampton ended 1 1. And tomorrow they'll be meeting another very, very tricky team, Brighton. Let's move into the Bundesliga in a bunkum way. Yes, in a bunkum way. Nobody saw that coming. Um, Dara Thompson, I hope you're around somewhere to really savour the defeat uh, you got yesterday from the bunkum team beating Manchester United for two is a strong talking point, Joel. Well. Uh, nobody saw that coming. I, I, I didn't see that coming because, you know, remember the, the last time we spoke, I said, Bayern Munich, we call them the disciplinary committee, you know, of you know, German football. They take you to the cleaners and they whitewash you. But look at the result. 4-2. Four, four I'm sure no, no betting team star would ever predict that. No, I mean, people would say it choke. And he yeah. actually choked when I said around, like, game. what happened? What's going on? But you can't take the, you can't take the trophy away from them. They're, yes. Fine, yeah, they lost, but it's okay. You win some, you lose some, like I always say. Borussia Dortmund, they defeated Union Berlin 3-0, though the gap is still there. But um, it was a big relief, knowing full way that the person you're running after lost scandalously. And, and you have three points, you just catch up again. Yes. Mm -hmm. it's a, it is a good one. I, I don't believe Borussia Dortmund will lift the league any which way. They will just keep rivaling. But it, it, it gives them confidence to fight on. That, that is just what it is. 52-46 on the log. Yeah, but... That, that's still a long way to go. Mm -hmm. I hope next week Bayern Munich lose again and then they catch up again. <laughs> I hope next week is not bunk home because it, it wasn't funny. But some other games that came up on the Bundesliga, like you see right there on your screen, Hammerfin defeated Bielefeld 2 0 is a new team promoted. And um, Bayern Leverkusen defeated VFB Stuttgart 4 2. And uh, Bunkham defeated Bayern Munchen 2 0. Uh, Forex defeated Hatter Berlin 2 1. Freiburg defeated men's 05, 1-1, uh, I beg your pardon. Freiburg, men's 05, ended 1-1. Entrance Frankfurt lost at home to Wolfsburg. And uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach defeated Osburg 3-2. Let me quickly say this, that we're putting up a very strong package right here in Super Screen TV to bring the Bundesliga games to you live on Saturdays after a new show that will be deputing very, very soon called the Super Screen Sports Center. So you can see that we have you in mind. Saturday will be bonkum in whatever way you want to look at it. All right, let's move straight to the La Liga. Yes, the La Liga. Barcelona is not having a very nice time, if you ask me, guys. They what? are actually having a very nice time. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> yes, Playing, it, it is better from the from the beginning of the season. Playing two two with Espanol. I know I, I know Espanol is a rival team right there in uh, Spain, mm. but with the current situation, they. they the with, with Barcelona's current situation, I think 2-2 two, two, two with Bayern is, is, <laughs> <laughs> is a very, very big win. Massive one for Xavi right there. Mm. Really, because I, I, coming into the game, they were losing up, up to 89 minutes or till Dijon could, could just muster that goal out yeah. of nowhere. The Barcelona of Coma, Barcelona would not would not have done that mm. I, I i think it would have entered 3-1 for mm. barcelona if it was it was from the beginning of the season barcelona we knew then okay barcelona we knew then but yeah. barcelona we know now this is what we this see is getting let's better. look at real madrid uh, fine they're cruising home but having a 0-0 game against Villarreal uh, was to me one of the worst games i've seen it was quite drab because um, i watched that game yeah i mean the Villarreal they came in and they said look even if we don't win if you don't score we need to take yeah, sure, and, and, and they share the spoils. So, um, 
That 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 score line favored the I mean, the, the yellow submarines. They, they they came all out. Even the, the, you know, I think they hit the woodwork once or something. So, mm -hmm. but Real Madrid, they have to be very careful because Sevilla is just right there, you yeah. know, waiting for them to lose. Yeah. So if they if they end up losing two games or draw two games, Sevilla is just gonna like you know um, top all these guys. But that quality one. players, they know. I mean, they know exactly what they are up to. That so one's up for I, I don't see that. I don't see that happening. Also. For you, Aziz, what's really wrong with Atletico Madrid? Because if you look at the table right in there, Atletico Madrid um, is occupying. Position number four, which is not their traditional spot. Over the weekend, they did win 4 3, but they, they weren't known to be considering so much uh, goals in matches played in the past. I think it just has to do with the level of companies in the defense. They are mm. getting tired, and I think they are weak a little bit. So probably they need to bring in some new defenders and and, and so that's you, see, have, you see, you see, one or two old boys there in the yes, defense. Yes, yes. That's what I'm saying. I think the defense player, just needs to be refreshed. There's one player I used to watch and I loved him, Godin. Mm. Yes. But he's no longer there. He's no longer with them. Even one fan, them. you have one or two old players. All right, also within the La Liga, Sevilla won their game against Elche 2 0. And uh, it was 0 0 between um, Valeria and Real Madrid and Cadez and Celta Vigo. So you could see that everywhere is hot enough. And uh, we'll take time out to also give you the position of the table of what the MPFL looks at when we come in on Wednesday. We'll be giving you updates of this. That's our one round of the show this afternoon. I told you it's always interesting, but time is not our friend right here on the show. Joel Rapido, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. Aziz Oba, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. Earlier on, we had our last coming show, but while today is his birthday from the Spot Dex, we're wishing him the very best, many, many, many more prosperity as he grows in wisdom and in God's guidance. So we're getting ready to shoot the balloons, and those of you who can shock, get ready. Like I told you earlier on, Aziz Oba will be coming in as presenter from time to time right here on the Spot Show. Big thanks to Emmanuel, not forgetting Francis and Joseph, and my main guy in there. Tayo Olor Shola and uh, Ahmed Amotekun. For those of you who have been staying glued to Super Screen TV, we say a very big thank you. Till we meet again on Wednesday, my name's Tillerman, Prince of the Vesa. Bye for now. The second half.